Good morning, everybody. I hope your evening went well. It was a nice one in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, uh, we went out to hear a talk last night. Arthur Brooks of the American Enterprise um, Organization, and it really, really was a great, great talk. Uh, this this guy is good. Uh, he injects a lot of humor. He makes his points the right way. Uh, he had plenty to say against the Republicans uh, last night. He does take a, it is a conservative economic take on what works. Um, the classical stuff, um, probably from the Hayek Austrian economic school when you get down to it. But if you do get a chance to go hear him, it's very, very entertaining plus great information uh, too. So that's how we spent our evening. And then home to walk Henry, which Henry always loves. Uh, Henry's not being uh, taken off the leash right now. He's been skunked two times. I just don't have time for him to get skunked the third time. But if you look at Newfoundland's bloodlines, they come from Tibetan Mastiffs, and the uh, Tibetan Mastiff is kind of a bronze color, maybe a little bit red. And when a Newfoundland gets ready to drop its fur, there's a red highlight. But I sped the process up with Henry uh, with a peroxide that gets rid of skunk. Uh, uh, Henry has red highlights, and um, <laughs> uh, he's, uh, I don't know if he knows what he looks like or not. So anyway, that was my evening last night. Uh, any meetings got a problem with the date? I think it was this way last month uh, when we rolled into September. We'll see. Uh, we'll contact any meeting and see if uh, we can get that corrected by tomorrow. So uh, here we are today. We've got a, we finally have some news that's going to kick in and maybe uh, really impact things. Uh, the um, E-mini's reaction to the overnight news and yesterday's close was pretty weak, so the sentiment may have shifted to negative in the E-mini. Uh, it has been based on bad news would make the Fed come in and support the market further. We're on track for the uh, overt support of the market, the uh, mortgage back and treasury buybacks being over uh, by October. Uh, they've got a lot more ways to support the market through repos, et cetera, but the uh, formal Outright program quantitative easing is supposed to be overcome the end of October, and perhaps that's impacting trading in the E mini too. Okay, I think the worst news out overnight for the EU was Draghi's uh, announcement that uh, the European Central Bank would be buying Greek and Cyprus paper. Now, what happens in Europe because of social welfare? No one saves for retirement. They're taking care of cradle to grave, and um, so they don't save. So who ends up owning all government paper? They're the major banks of Europe. Uh, they, they participate in every auction. It becomes part of the bank's portfolio. So what Draghi said was is that he's going to transfer that at risk from the major European banks uh, from their balance sheet to the taxpayer's balance sheet. And frankly, that's what our Fed has done, and it's the way it always ends up. The taxpayer is always left holding the bag. Uh, these large banks' uh, positions and salaries, for the most part, are protected unless you live in, I uh, in Iceland. Iceland had the, had the best solution for it uh, that I've seen of late, but that won't happen in the EU, and it won't happen in the U.S. Uh, a lot of the uh, turnstile jobs that uh, from government uh, end up uh, with six and seven figures uh, at the major banks. Those organizations deemed too large to fail. So uh, the sentiment in the ES may have switched to negative. We know that um, quantitative easing is over come the end of October. Uh, so the ES today is our biggest question mark in my most humble opinion. Okay, the ADP number. 200K, that's kind of the default number since the uh, September of 2012. Uh, sometimes comes in much higher. Every now and then lower than forecast, but usually it meets this 200 number and larger. Uh, ISM index at 58. This is a healthy number. Both of these would be supportive for the stock market. If the stock market does not rally off of these two numbers, then the sentiment, I think, is shifted to negative until the next piece of supportive news. Construction spending, no one will pay any attention to it, up a half. 
crude inventories plus 600,000 barrels. And auto truck sales, which trickle in through noon, are forecast at 16.8. That's a real healthy number. That is very, very supportive. Um, anything over 16 million uh, in annual vehicle sales uh, really makes it fun to work at the automobile company. So um, first focus ADP followed by uh, ISM, and then third will be auto and truck sales. Then we're on to Friday's non-farm payroll number. Now, out of all these numbers, this number tends to come in much higher than forecast for manufacturing and for services a couple of days later. Uh, it's been that way since before the November elections. Um, so this number uh, is what it is. Uh, a lot of people uh, look at it with a bit of skepticism, but they still trade the headline. So it's the headline that's important. Okay, where is resistance? It starts at 31.5, so our first band of resistance is right in here. So our cell one is 31 to 03. Uh, we are higher. We're leaning against uh, uh, the single prints from a long time ago. Uh, our second band of cell is 7 to 11. If the mini cell uh, sells today, we're going to get to that second level. Best resistance on this chart is 8 to 12, and then again at 20, uh, where the market has traded recently. On the buy side, the breakout came at 26, so 26, 22 is buy one. We may have to pay up. We're at 29 and a half. We're going to try to buy on the cheap started out, and then 17 to 21, which would be a very, very comfortable limit buy order at 17 would be pretty easy to put out there and just kind of leave and see what happens if it gets down there. Okay, another piece of unsettling news overnight. The first case of Ebola ever in the United States is being treated in Dallas. And our government has assured us that there is absolutely no way of this spreading or getting out of control. Now, if you look at our government's reaction and what they're able to do uh, with really, really large uh, problems like Katrina, like Hurricane Sandy and everything else, they really aren't set up to effectively counter in a timely manner these types of problems. It takes a long time to gear up. So here we are. We didn't do what most countries have done historically, close their borders uh, to disease. In fact, we've opened our borders up to tuberculosis, that's resistance to, resistance to antibiotic, dengue fig, uh, fever, a lot of names I can't pronounce. We're inviting these people into the country. We're not screening them. And then we're shipping them off, off the, across the entire United States. And it is another piece of news that in the back of your mind, you just say, what in the hell is going on here? What's happening? What is wrong with this picture? And what's wrong with this picture is, is that um, the government is taking steps right now that are have historically proven to be catastrophic over time. It's just it's not it's not good, and that adds to unease. And that in the way it impacts trading and the rest of it is that uh, it's real easy for uh, the selling to get started and people to run to the sidelines. Okay. Uh, the knob spread is kind of holding and hasn't really expanded. Um, the 30-year wasn't as strong uh, as the 10-year overnight. So I'm going to pull the sell zone into this 15 to 19. Uh, it's pretty aggressive. I would like to get it done at 19 or better, lean against this high. And then the second sell zone of 23 to 27. Uh, frankly, uh, my bond calls, my number one points have been blown right through. Uh, the number two points have held up pretty well. So let's think in terms of maybe, um, well, hell, let's not think in terms. Let's just do it this way. May have to lower it later, but we'll make it 19 to 23 and then 27 to 31. 
and that's where we are. On the buy side, this move started at 01. Uh, last rotate down was 07. Uh, we're currently at 13. Uh, so 5 to 9 will be buy 1. And 01 to 29 will be buy 2. Now, back when I was downrange a lot, and I was in Africa quite a bit, uh, the Congo, South Africa, Angola, and Liberia of all places, uh, the um, Africa was a country where you could die just from bugs, uh, from disease, or from the native population picking up a machete at the wrong time. Uh, it was a place that you had to stay on your toes. and um, we are encouraging um, those diseases and insects to come into the United States now. It, it just it doesn't make sense at any level unless um, you're trying to um, divert attention with you know moving from one crisis to the next. Takes take attention off yourself, spread it someplace else, and then you know you're not under as much scrutiny as you would have been. But it, it doesn't make sense at any level. Uh, I have also participated in helping massive uh, typhoons, uh, hurricanes, uh, earthquakes uh, back in the old days, old days for sure. And uh, it's not easy to pick up the pieces quickly. It, it takes time, as we've seen. So um, it, it just it's not comfortable uh, at any level these days. Okay, uh, the E-mini is kind of critical today. We are at one of those potential turning turning points, and gold trades counter usually to the E-mini. So gold, our 5 to 7, which we finally got to, held last night, and then we're going to have 1,200 plus or minus, which is by 2, and I think that's where we were last night. On the sell side, uh, the spill, the last rotate up stopped at 16 and then, then 12. So this is aggressive uh, as can be. It is where resistance is right now, 10 to 12, and 15 to 17 is much more comfortable. So again, I think the E-mini's reaction to news uh, will be helpful. The news, if as forecast, is a negative for gold. Uh, but the E-mini's reaction to that might mitigate the headlines for gold. So uh, we just kind of have to watch this. Support has held at 5 to 7, and then uh, I think they're going for stops below 1,200. I may get there today with a little help from the E-mini. Okay, looking at the euro, uh, Draghi's announcement was inevitable. Uh, it's really the only thing that he can do. Um, another nail in the coffin for the EU has been driven. Uh, you really can't uh, escape what's coming. The taxpayer is always left holding the bag. It's just the way that it is. Um, and it, it's never going to change. And crony capitalism, those that are well tied into the government and the rest of it, generally escape um, unscathed with their fortunes intact these days. And I don't see that changing either. But we came in last night wanting to sell 45 to 55. We thought we might get stops above this D period high. We didn't. Uh, the trade, once again, is a limit sell against volume or a trade in the high volume area, which side would you trade from? You'd trade from the short side because of what's come before it. Resistance is still in this 70 area. So 60 to 70 is pretty good resistance. Uh, we're a long ways away from that. We're at 26.03. So this 15 to 25 is aggressive, but that's where resistance is. And then 35 to 45 is sell too. Yesterday's rotation down stopped at 85, so uh, we're, we'll make 80 to 90 by one. It is where support is, and then we'll make 50 to 60 by two. Uh, if we take out yesterday's lows, I'm pretty sure we're headed for 50.
So the cell one is aggressive, but we're doing that uh, um, in consideration of the news, which would be a negative for the EU if it comes in as forecast. And we'll Come on, mouse, work. There we go. Mouse or Charlie? I never know exactly what it is. I'll blame it on the mouse. <laughs> you guys won't believe me, I know. So, Rohit, let's see. Uh, yeah, you know, moving the money to Hong Kong, you know, China is really... Uh, the initial investment in China came from Hong Kong and Taiwan. And China, you know, regularly said, well, they've taken over Hong Kong effectively. Uh, they haven't uh, used draconian repression there. Uh, they haven't killed anybody, but they sure as hell have put their people in charge of that government. Um, so... China really has to tread lightly, and Hong Kong is the financial center. Uh, it's uh, Tokyo, which is losing uh, its uh, clout in the world, followed by Hong Kong, and Shanghai is on the, on the rise. So they have to be very, very careful. So I would say the Russian money is probably fairly safe in Hong Kong, uh, especially with China uh, controlling Hong Kong. So. I don't think they have to worry too much about it, if I had to make a guess. Okay, crude, after a heavy selling like we had yesterday, tends to retrace. So we've got this low right here at 92, 92.17. We've got the spill from 92.50, and we've got this volume cluster in this 92 area. So uh, the high is 80. We're at 71, 75 to 92. It's aggressive as hell as sell one. And then our 25 to 50 is sell two. I like the sell two a lot better, but this is resistance. And it's not going to be too difficult to get into this volume area right here. Uh, London's low was 22, so 91, 91 and a quarter by one. And then 90, 50, 90, 75. I think we are headed for 90, 50. Probably not today. Uh, mixed news on crude oil out of Iraq. Uh, one of the news stories yesterday is another Iraqi battalion was taken out, uh, later to be denied. I mean, I don't know what's going on. What, what happens in a war zone is what's initially reported is rarely the case. But that doesn't stop the market from reacting to headlines. And uh, so these news algos that trade or program to react to the headlines, and what you're looking for is follow-through buying or follow-through selling. Okay, for the E-mini, uh, uh, today could be um, um, an important day in the E-mini. Um, the news is, is forecast to be supportive. Um, we're at 1960. Uh, this is going to be the fourth time we're down here if we break it. If the market is so strong, what are we doing down here the fourth time? I mean, we really have to pay attention to this. Uh, so we are at support. Um, it starts yesterday's low was 61. We've had a low at uh, 56, just below 56. Had a low of 58 right here. Had a low of, uh, so this uh, 56, 58 is pretty good support. So maybe stops beneath it. And this is just, you're just leaning against support. That's all there is to it. And uh, then 49.51 for buy two. You can see this low volume area here from 53 uh, up to 57 right now is uh, holding uh, support. Now we've got volume over time. 
Inside the congestion area, it's a P. If you look at the entire um, profile from a TPO standpoint, it's a B. So this is mixed. Uh, what this tells me with volume over time is, is that we've got to take out the low to stay short, and it has to come out and stay out on the first test. Uh, the news focus, ADP 200, that's kind of the default number. Uh, this number could come in higher. They tend to ride a little bit to the high side. Uh, ISM index tends to come in better than forecast since September of 2012 at 58. That's when the ADP numbers started getting really, really good, too. I think it's called crony capitalism. Uh, crude inventories at 0.6 million barrels. Um, then auto and truck sales. Construction spending is there, so well, it's there, but auto and truck sales at 16.8. Now, last month it was over 17 million. I forget what, what the number was. It was a huge number. Maybe it was 17 and a half. But 16.8 is a great number. The big number that is very, very supportive than construction spending at plus 0.5 and no one pays any attention to it. So one, two, three, and this auto and truck sales number may, might be the most important of the bunch. On the sell side, resistance is at, I mean, it's just here, so 64, 66, sell one, that is resistance, and then 69, 71, sell two. And we'll adjust it after the news. We'll see what the reaction is. So this news is going to have uh, import today for two reasons. It's number one, on a headline basis, period, and then the other, uh, bullish news and the E-mini doesn't react to it. If that is the case, then the sentiment has shifted, in my opinion. Okay, it'll take at least 20 minutes to get everything up and running. I'm going to get busy on that. Be back with you as soon as possible. Later. <laughs>